Welcome to The Hot Sauce. This is Angel Planells, a registered dietitian nutritionist in Seattle, Washington. I just cracked 140 subscribers and the goal is to make it to 250. So do me a solid and like, comment, and subscribe and let's get right into it. Today, we are going to feature Carol Bergslum, a registered dietitian nutritionist that resides in Long Beach, California, and her daughter, Kelly Sloan Tabor, a registered dietitian nutritionist that resides in Parker, Colorado, a suburb of Denver. All right, well, welcome back to the hot sauce. Today we have Carol Berg Sloan and Kelly Sloan. We have a unique episode here. We're gonna have a mother-daughter episode, both a registered dietitian. So we're gonna go ahead and put Carol into the hot seat here. We're gonna allow her to tell her story. And then afterwards, we'll turn it over to Kelly and we can hear her inspiration and all that. So Carol, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us about your journey into the profession? Go. Sure. sure, I'm ready. Hi, Angel. This is just so thrilling to be on your podcast, The Hot Sauce. It's just really a big deal. And of course, have my daughter is even a bigger deal. But um, I've been around for uh, several years as a registered dietitian. I went to Cal State LA. I'm a Southern California gal, born and raised and still live here. And um, I, I went to Cal State LA. And at the time, they had a coordinated undergraduate dietitian program and they were literally walking around the halls of the uh, home economics department looking for students that were interested in going to the dietetics program so can you imagine that that they're looking for students instead of now where it's the other way around that if you get into a program it's like a big deal so I decided to go into um, dietetics because I was very interested in food and food safety and uh, my mom was a home ec teacher so I kind of just really was interested in that so that began my journey and when I graduated with my bachelor of science degree I was eligible uh, to go right into the coordinated program and did all of my internships through the university in Southern California and when I finished with that one year program I was eligible to take the RD exam and I dove right into a job, dove right into a job, didn't get any graduate degrees, which are now required. Um, but, uh, you know, went right into uh, into the profession and have been doing that for, for many years now. OK, cool. Would you um, with that? Yeah, I, I always find it interesting to speak to see people that have been in the profession for a long time without going too deep in detail. Uh, what would you say? have been some of the different areas of the profession that you've kind of worked in? Sure. Well, you know, I have to say when I did my clinical rotation, I was like, oh, I don't really know that I like going and talking to the 70 year old uh, patient who just had a heart attack. And at the time we went in there and said, don't eat any fat, don't eat this, don't eat that. It was all like avoid, avoid, don't, 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 instead of being more inclusive. And it just wasn't very satisfying. So I wanted to go into the business part of the profession, which at the time was kind of looked at like, oh my God, you're not going right into clinical or into public health. You're going to go into the business side how bizarre but I was really interested in prevention and working with people so they could make informed choices so they have a healthier lifestyle so I was always a little bit outside of the box and um, I also will say and I wanted this to go to a lot of your listeners is that I was involved with the Student Dietetic Association on campus right away I was involved with my local Los Angeles district and the California State uh, Association, and of course, the Academy as it is known now. So I was involved with that right away. And that, I will say, is how I got all of my jobs was through my connections and networking with other professionals through dietetic practice groups or volunteering in any other way. Awesome. That's great to hear. Um, you are, I guess, in your living the dream, which is very fascinating that you chose that because I actually when I was starting my stuff, I also put living the dream down. <laughs> so tell me about what you do at your, you know, for your, for your, I guess, for your overall consultation group thing that you do. Yeah, well, I am considered a consultant. I am self-employed and I am the boss of my whole business and I'm the only employee. So it's really great. Um, and right now, my full time consulting position is as health research director for the California Walnut Commission. And that is a commodity board that represents the 4500 growers here in California. 
And my role there is to work with investigators and researchers to continue to unveil the health benefits of walnuts. So I help coordinate clinical trials and uh, look at uh, letters of intent and other applications for proposals. And of course, I've always surrounded myself with brilliance. So I have a health research advisory group, which consists of mostly PhD RDs that help us uh, kind of sift through all of the um, the research proposals that are out there and identify priorities for the, the walnut industry. So that's like my main full-time job, but I also still consult with um, long-term care, if you will. I have nine facilities that I act as the dietitian. I'm a newsletter editor for one of the DPGs because I love that. And I also am part of a coalition that works for Bayer Crop Science. And it's a group of dietitians that talk about modern agriculture and biotechnology. So lots of uh, fingers and lots of different pies, but I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> now that sounds like you're living the dream right there. Wow. So. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, the next question for you, you know, uh, considering all of your experiences and everything, you know, if you could do it all over again in your career, what would you change and what would you keep the same? Hmm, that's a that's a good question. And I, you know, I always kind of think about that. I was very fortunate to be married to my husband and still am who, who had a, I always say a real job, but that's not really true anymore. But he had a job where I had health benefits through him. And that's one thing that when you go into consulting, a lot of um, dietitians, early career dietitians, and a lot of the students that I precept, they're like, oh my God, Carol, I want to be the health research director for a commodity board. I want to do what you're doing. I want to make the money you make because I always tell everybody how much money I make because if we don't share our salaries, we're always going to be lower than where we should be. So I always talk about money as well. Uh, and they're like, oh, I want to do that. But you know, it, it's it's a long journey and everybody needs to get on their own path and figure it out. Um, but that is one thing about being a consultant is you have to figure that, you know, you have to pay for your own health insurance. So I always tell them like, if I make 10 bucks, three of that goes to taxes, two of that goes to health insurance, you're left with half of what you think you're going to make when you see that big dollar <laughs> sign. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, considering you've been in the field for a long time, what does the future hold for you? Well, I'm still, you know, looking forward to, to working with the California Walnut Commission. There's a lot of exciting things going on. The new dietary guidelines are coming out. Uh, FDA is coming up with a definition for healthy. Uh, so many whole foods are working together. Uh, Texas A&M has that new program, Institute of, um, Ag of Health through Agriculture. So much going on. And that's another thing I like to tell students is the future is bright. And if you picked going into dietetics, you're already ahead of the curve because you're going into a profession where you can do anything, absolutely anything. So the future for me still looks very bright. I'm excited to keep working. And again, very fortunate that I'm able to do it on a consulting basis. Awesome. And then the final question for you before we turn it over to Kelly is any words of wisdom for the next generation of dietitians? Um, I guess if you, um, yeah, uh, any any pearls of wisdom, any anything you got here? Well, you know, I'm a preceptor to two of the universities here in Southern California, or actually three of them. And, you know, students go through their business entrepreneurial uh, internship portion with me. And they're always so, I would say the majority, 80% of them are, are, are scared and worried. What am I going to do? Um, they don't have confidence. And I don't know, you know, confidence comes with age, but it also comes from your upbringing and then from within. So I like to tell students, you know, be confident in what you're doing. Don't doubt yourself. Um, and if you do doubt yourself or feel that you don't have confidence, then you need to surround yourself with people that can build that up. And, it, you know, a lot of times you can find others um, around you in your workplace or in your internship or wherever you work that will build, build that up. Um, I also wish that I had been a little bit more of a risk taker. Um, I was in the fact that I went into the business segment of dietetics, you know, those many years ago. But I wish I had been a little bit more... Um, of, like I said, I'm a risk taker I, and done some things that were even more outside of the box. Um, a lot of things that I see dietitians doing now, 
Um, so, you know, you know, be, have confidence, don't doubt yourself and, and be willing to take, to take risks. And one last thing I have to say uh, is no, share. No, no, no. You, you got to share. I feel like our profession has always been very close to the best. You know, nobody wants to share what they're making, what they're doing, what they're looking at. And, and we need to share. Otherwise, we're not going to build our profession and get us up at a salary level and a intelligence level, educational level um, with other health professionals and investigators. So I, I really feel that um, we need to share and we need to build each other up. I know there's a couple organizations that are like build up RDs. Uh, Lee McGrath, for example, has that wonderful group, but we need to build each other up because I find a lot of competition, pettiness, um, et cetera, within the profession. And I'm hoping that will continue to change. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. It was great sure. to hear your story. And then I guess before we turn it over, how does it feel for you to have a daughter that enters the profession? I mean, I'm gonna start, what are, I'm gonna what are your thoughts on that? Angel. I'm going to start crying. I know you have a couple of kids too, <laughs> but the biggest compliment in the world is for, you know, one of your children to follow you into, into your profession. I mean, it, it's really, when, when Kelly got accepted into her program, I literally was, was weeping and, and now for her to be a MSRD and, and, and being so successful so early in her career is really uh, as a mom, you know, <laughs> <a big> deal. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. So we're going to put Kelly in the hot seat here. Oh, She's yeah. going to go in the hot seat now. All right. So Kelly, now you're in the hot seat. So can you, with um, I guess, tell us about your journey and how your mother has influenced you to become a dietitian? What would you say? Of course. Um, well, my journey began at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, where I got accepted to the undergraduate program there. So I took that big leap to get out of my parents' nest and go to an island in the middle of the ocean for my schooling. Um, I was a five and a half year student. I am not ashamed of that because the program there was very, very intensive, research-based. Um, Hawaii has that agriculture aspect. So we were able to kind of dive into more in-depth um, agriculture-based nutrition. So my experience in Hawaii was great, and I'm glad I stayed there for as long as I did because I met my now husband, Ryan, there because he was born and raised. Um, and then my second part of my journey was trying to get into that program uh, for the dietetic internship. And as my mom said, it was a very emotional journey because I actually did not get accepted the first round or I wasn't matched the first round for my um, applications and that was very very discouraging and in all you know honesty I did actually uh, second guess my choice for becoming a dietitian or going down that road because of that matching process but you know my mom has I grew up with my mom uh, having me cook with her in the kitchen we were surrounded by food and I would go with her to her facilities uh, just to see what she did on a daily basis and you know I had, you know, FOMO, fear of missing out, wanted to go see what my mom was doing for the day. Um, and so I kind of got, you know, involved in that dietetics aspect at a young age. So then when we went through this matching process, that was so upsetting. But, you know, I came, I got my, you know, confidence back. As my mom said, it really is hard at that age to have that confidence. But I just rethought it and was like, you know what, I'm going to just apply again. Hopefully I get matched. And if not, I will try to do something related to nutrition, whether it's public health, something where I can still get the RD eventually. Um, so I did apply for the second round um, and I did match to the Cal State Long Beach coordinated uh, program for the master's and internship. And that was a relief. And that's what my mom said. She was very, very emotional and happy that I got matched. Um, and then I did do that program and did long distance with my now husband for two and a half years. And that program was so worth the just that struggle of just getting through the uh, master's and the internship. Uh, I did learn a lot. And just to kind of dive into that, um, my mom went through it too. I did live at home while I went to Cal State Long Beach, but my rotation was not, uh, not all of my rotations were the best. Um, and just to, like I said, be all honest on here, 
it was kind of hard working with preceptors who were closer to my age because there was a lot of competition, a lot of um, negativity and not a lot of support. And I do have to say my clinical rotation was my worst because the preceptor was about five, six years older than me and she wanted the program I was in and she didn't get into it. And the fact that I was able to do it and work and do all these other things, I could tell she, we, we butted heads and she was not supportive. So my clinical rotation was not my favorite, but I got through it <laughs> and uh, graduated, got my master's. Um, and then I went back to Hawaii to be with my uh, husband and that's where we got engaged. And then now we're in Colorado. I have a pretty wild adventure, but that's kind of where it started. But my mom went through it all with me. She introduced me to the profession and got me through it. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Awesome. What is your uh, what is your current job in Colorado? Well, interestingly, <laughs> um, I moved out here with a, in a position for an outpatient dietitian for the Buckley Air Force Base here. Um, I'm a I'm a contractor currently where I do see patients one on one. I also do health promotions um, and try to just get you know that preventative side of nutrition um, to the the clients, the community on base. However, I did not enjoy being a contractor during just for their limitations with benefits and just what we can do for the base. So I actually got a new position that I am starting the Monday after Thanksgiving. I will be a food service director for a long care facility. Okay. Um, so that will be my job. But I kind of just have dove, dove into different types of the uh, profession just to see what I would like. And, and right now I think food service is where I'm more comfortable and um, financially it's the best decision I can make right now. I like it. I like it. That sounds good. So next question for you. And I know this is kind of hard because you've been a, you, you mentioned earlier, you've been a dietitian in 2019. Yes. What do you expect in the future? I know this is kind of a, you know, if you, I guess, I guess I think what they usually ask is if you could see yourself five, 10, 15, 20 years from now, what do you envision? Well, that's a great question because just throughout my journey, I've always wanted to do something similar to what my mom did, focus more on the media side of it. Um, since my mom did work with a, brand, a big brand commodity board, I always wanted to do that social media side. So just a little past um, information about what I did during my undergrad. I did work with Aaron Polinsky Wade, a very well known media dietitian, mm -hmm. and I worked with her for eight years. I was her intern, and then I became her like a nutrition communication specialist, where I just managed her content and helped uh, just kind of develop more information for her website. So I've always wanted to be in social media. It is way more uh, limited for dietitians to get in there or, or the connections are the hard part. So I've kept those connections and I'm hoping down the road I can get into something uh, communications, media related, but for right now the best uh, best job for me is the, the food service management until I can hopefully dive into that media side. Oh, cool. I like that. And then I guess, you know, you, you've mentioned your story of perseverance, you know, <laughs> applying for an internship and not making it. And thank you for sharing, because I think it's good for people to hear these types of things, because um, uh, I know for for some of us, it might feel a little foreign to hear rejection. And then <laughs> I've, I've, I've interviewed a bunch of people for the consulting company that we have, and there's a lot of people that, you know, either may not make their first round of the internship or even not pass their first round of doing the RD exam. So any words of advice for people coming into the profession besides what you've shared already? Anything you're thinking? Uh, what comes to mind, again, would just be don't give up and don't let those that are negative around you bring you down because what their journey was is not yours because you can still do what you want to do. And they. it's not all about you know, the knowledge, you know, it's about the hands-on experience, the work ethic as well. It's not just being book smart. You have to be a well-rounded dietitian. And a lot of, like my mom had said earlier, a lot of the negativity 
and you know just people bringing each other down is is becoming more common and i think we just need to be more supportive of each other so don't give up we're support the, the profession <laughs> okay awesome well let's move Eric, let's move you out the hot seat here <laughs> So, no, I, I greatly appreciate both of you for sharing your story and, and talking about your journeys. And I definitely think that, uh, as mentioned, it's important that, um, you know, me doing these videos, I love to have people connect with individuals and, and reach out and, and see that we're not all alone. Sometimes I, I perceive people working in silos. They're just doing their thing. They don't recognize that there's other people doing it. And, and I think, uh, you know, for Kelly, even though you're doing food service, you could still do some media things on the side. There's never a, you know, I think it's time. It's, a, you know, we all have the same amount of time. You can knock that out and, you know, who knows, maybe there's some collaborative efforts with your mother. She, <laughs> she is just a short phone call away, you know. Not. <laughs> but no, no, it's yeah. great. Yeah. And, um, well, interestingly though, Angel, Jenna, uh, Kelly and I have both been um, writing a nutrition column for a local paper here in Southern California for, what has it been now, Kelly, seven years you started? Okay. Yeah, seven years. And I mean, it's one of those rags that, you know, you find in the in the driveway or whatever, but it has a half a million dollar, a half a million subscriber list. And so, you know, that's another way I always tell students and early, uh, early career dietitians is, you know, start a nutrition column, start a blog, do something for your church, do something for anywhere just to get the word out and to get that evidence based nutrition information out to folks. Um, so many opportunities, like I said, just it's unbelievable. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I, I, you know, I think the thing for, for me is that there's like, you know, you go on the airplane, you see the airplane magazine. It's like, hey, why don't you reach out to the editor and write a write an article? Mm -hmm. And or you, yeah, you go to the grocery store and you see the little, you know, community newspaper. Reach out to the editor; they'll love to take an article. I think one of the one of the struggles I see is people will be like, well, do I have to do it for free? Do I have to get paid for it, or are we kind of building up a database for future? payment opportunities you know i think it's kind of one of these things but if we don't put the uh you know nutritionally relevant information out there other people will and right. so it's important that we that we not be afraid to put it out there and yeah i mean i i'm i'm too busy of a guy i do too many things so i just try my best whenever i get the chance but you know and this is my way of giving back i can do these podcasts and <laughs> other things like that so yeah, that is great you you put a spotlight on so many different uh career paths it's just unbelievable and i'm hoping we can get more you know more dietitians involved in you know yeah right. well i think this is this is probably the main purpose for me is doing these to showcase the diversity of opportunities in the profession because um i'm not sure besides your access into the profession via your mother <laughs> Would you say a lot of your a lot of your classmates might have felt it's only clinical or food service? Is that like the that was what was put into our heads from day one was you got to do clinical or food service and actually community WIC was pushed on us um, throughout okay. throughout my uh, undergrad. But I think once during my undergrad, I actually like I said worked for Aaron Polinsky, and everyone's like, "What is social media for nutrition?" And then they thought I was the oddball. So it was, it was interesting to be like, I don't want that traditional route. I'm going to do something different. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, and it's, it's funny because I, sometimes people will call me non-traditional and I was like, what does that mean? Like, what yeah, is traditional? Right? <laughs> that's, that's a weird way to talk about it, but, um, but no, well, I, I greatly appreciate both your time. Thank you very much. And I will, um, you know, share your stuff online and then, uh, hopefully, uh, Kelly, when you get a little more advances the career we'll have you back again and sure. you could give more of your story and carol it's always great to see you around so <laughs> you know there might be more topics we bring you back for don't worry about it so happy to do it yes so, so, thank you for the opportunity <laughs>
With that being said, thank you very much for being here with us today. I hope you really enjoy the video and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.